Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Do I really need a numeric keypad? I think you do. All right, the growing trend, especially from Apple, is to lop off this side of the keyboard. This is an actual Apple keyboard. So if you haven't seen one of these, it's actually got extra keys on this side. This is the numeric keypad. It's different from these buttons up here. Premiere Pro treats these buttons with special features that aren't on these buttons here. Now, if you don't have a numeric keypad, you can buy them for as little as $8.99. There's tons made by lots of different manufacturers and they're USB and you plug them in. So if you are a laptop based user and you don't have a numeric keypad, you can add it through USB. Some Windows laptops like the HP ZBook that I have here actually does have a numeric keypad on it. And there's very specific features. You gotta remember that video editing happened long before laptops even existed. And all keyboards on those desktop systems had numeric keypads. So editors learned to take advantage of those. The unbelievable precision you have with a numeric keypad, I could not live without it. How can you move one mouse, uh, one frame with a mouse when you're zoomed all the way out? You can't. You don't have the accuracy in this big old piece of plastic. You have to get accurate with the keypad. Let's go have a look. So the first of all, if you have nothing selected in the timeline, and here is your playhead, if I wanted to move this playhead one frame ahead, how do you do that? Well, if you have nothing selected and you tap the plus key on the numeric keypad, you'll see you instantly get a plus symbol in this area here. And I'll type one, and then I'll hit the enter key on the numeric keypad. I just moved my playhead one exact frame ahead. Great if you're trying to line things up. What if I have something selected, like this title? So I'll click on this title, and if I type plus one, enter, I just moved that one frame. You can't do that easily with a mouse, especially when you're zoomed all the way up. Now, of course, any number helps, or any number works. So what if I wanted to move this 30 frames earlier, minus 30, enter, I just moved it minus 30. Now, you'll notice that that SMPTE time code counts hours, minutes, seconds, frames, and all nonlinear editors always count from the frames first, because what's the chance you're moving that in seconds and frames? A lot more than you're moving in an hour. So you don't have to type in 00 colon 00 colon 00 colon 30, enter. Three, uh, if you just, any, any, two numbers or three or 20 numbers. So if I type in two zero zero enter, I just moved this clip to the two second mark on the timeline because I didn't use plus or minus. If you add the period key, the dot key beside the zero on the numeric keypad, now you're doing seconds and frames. If I want to move my playhead one second ahead, plus one point enter, and you can see it's 18. If I want to move my playhead to 16, minus two point, boom, I just moved it to 16. Same with this clip. If I wanna move this one second earlier, minus one point, enter. I just moved it one second. You can also do this to multiple clips. So if I select all of these titles, minus two point, boom. I just moved them all two seconds earlier because they were selected. Now this will also work, and this is a beautiful one, with edit points. So let's zoom in and look at some edits that we've got. So I'll, I'll zoom in to where I've got a head and tail on each one of these. So if I have a rolling edit, so I'm holding down the control key on Windows Command on Mac, this is a rolling edit that I have, and I don't even have to have the, the playhead here. I'm gonna do a rolling edit between these two, minus five, enter. I just did a rolling edit five frames earlier plus one, enter, plus one point, enter. I just moved it one second. Wow, can you do this with multiple edit points selected? You sure can. Okay, check this out. I'm gonna hold the control key and the shift key, which is the command key and shift on the Mac. I have a ripple trim on the end of this one, a ripple trim 
a ripple trim on that one, a ripple trim on this one, and I'm going to go a little bit further and a ripple trim on that one. I have three ripple trims, minus five, enter. I just did three ripple trims exactly five frames earlier just by doing that. Now, you can't see those uh, until you go and look at them, but I think that's pretty cool. And actually, there is a, a something that Avid users uh, used from years ago that if I do a ripple trim in on this top piece and a ripple trim out on that one. And uh, let's do a minus uh, 20 enter. You'll see that I ripple trimmed both of these. So that the title was trimmed one way and the clip was trimmed the other way at the same time. There's no limit to however many you have. So that's what this little guy is here for absolute unbelievable precision to have on that keyboard instead of always noodling around with the mouse. So to answer the question, do you really need a numeric keypad? Heck, for $8.99, you absolutely do. All right, hopefully you found this informative and now I've forced you to go out and buy another piece of hardware <laughs> or start using that numeric keypad that you've never used before that you actually have on your desktop computer or laptop. Uh, if you found this informative and you're new to video reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna take your support up a notch? Go join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.